joined now by Tana Hazi Coates, national correspondent for the Atlantic and author of the new book, which is out right now. We were eight years in power in American tragedy, which is a, a phenomenal read that you should definitely pick up. You're, I, I'm, I'm looking at your facial expression while watching the me recounting this. What's going through your head? Um. I'm literally speechless. Um, I'm not speechless from the fact of learning the information. Um, I'm speechless that we, we needed this. Um, and I'm, I'm not trying to poo poo the reporting, which was excellent, needed to be done. But is this really surprising? They are who we thought they were. Um, this uh, accords with everything else we knew about Donald Trump, everything else we knew uh, about uh, Steve Bannon. I think there's a group of people who have tried to willfully uh, delude themselves about the nature and want to tut tut and, you know, have really thin conversations about what, what is white supremacy and what is not. Um, I don't know what else we need. I don't know if we need Steve Bannon to actually lynch somebody on the White House lawn to get the message. Um, but it seems pretty clear to me. Um one of the things that comes through in this article, and I thought about it in, in reference to the first white president essay that you published recently, which is uh, one of the essays that's collected in the book, is their awareness that there is power in the thing they are cultivating. And they're right. They're correct. Well, I mean, they know that there are clicks, there's right. audience, there's right. energy, right. there's passion, there's right. some fuel. Right. And that's part of the why they're going to it, it right. they, because that's where the energy is. And at the same time, they recognize they're playing a dangerous game. Right. Which is getting, trying to channel that fuel, but make sure that you can stay disassociated enough for plausible deniability. Right, because there's, a, you know, another section of Americans, obviously, and someone within the Republican Party who, you know, would be completely appalled uh, at the uh, explicit, you know, alliance with racists and, and, and white supremacists. But it, it's, it's been pretty clear. I mean, the, the, uh, when he was a candidate, the president of the United States said of a judge officiating over his case, he's a Mexican. <laughs> I mean, I, I he don't, can't judge me. He can't, because he's a Mexican. You know what I mean? Right. I, I just don't know how um, more um, explicit we, we, we can get here. You know, one of the things, uh, one of the themes in the essays and, and in your writing is about sort of white supremacy and, and, and racism in terms of anti-blackness, mm -hmm. specifically in the way that was built up. Mm -hmm. And there's a whole sort of political history of the ways in which that played out in crime and the way we dealt with crack epidemic mm -hmm. and Willie Horton ad and mm -hmm. things like that. What do you make of the fact that blackness is not the primary target of this kind of politics these days? Or often, if not, if it is the primary, it is along with, along with Muslims yeah. and immigrants who, who are also very <laughs> much the target. I don't know how different that is. You know, when Al Smith ran for president and he went, you know, into the South, Al Smith obviously, at least white by our terms. Right. I mean, they burnt crosses. You know, there's always been because he was Catholic. Because he was right. Catholic. There's always right. been an anti-Semitic element right. to white supremacy. Uh, you can, you know, go back into, you know, and find cartoons from the 19th century just after enslavement and see simian images of Irish Americans equated with, with black people. Um, that's not to diminish, you know, the fact that, but there's, there's always been, you know, other folks, other groups that would al were along with black people in terms of being the victims and the targets of white supremacy. One of the things that I think of is what's taboo and what's not, mm -hmm. right? So the Sig Hale salute is taboo, mm -hmm. right? I mean, you just can't, I mean, they get, I, my, well, my favorite part of that story is they get kicked out of the bar right. in Dallas. Right. Can't go around. <laughs> That's not, you know, right. when you see that in your bar, you say, right. get the heck out of my bar. Right. Right. Saying that is the only good thing that Islam has done for the country is 9-11, or the only thing that Islam has done is 9-11, or that all Muslim, uh, all mosques are a factory of hate, that is, the uncomfortable truth is that is decidedly less taboo it's in American acceptable. life. It's, it's, it's acceptable. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a different line. Um, and I don't know if that has to do with uh, the relationship between, you know, uh, criminal acts and history. For instance, the Holocaust is not on the guilt. Right. You know, it's not on the conscience of, of, of Americans. And so we have a much easier time finger waving about that, um, as opposed to the proximity of history with, you know, 9-11. Um, and so that, that's a different thing. People feel more justified mm. in their bigotry, you know, perhaps. But um, it, it's quite clear that that's, that's not a line that, you know, that there's no, no line in terms of, you know, uh, uh, forbidding folks to, you know, use that sort of language. Well, one of, the, one of the arguments I think you've made is, you know, that the, the taboos have been knocked away. That the, 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 the subtext has become the text, the quiet part is said loud in the yeah. era of Trump, yeah. and that's his power. What do you make of the people who say, I am a never-Trumper, and I condemn him when he 
says about Mexicans and condemn him when he does about Judge Curiel and condemn him with Charlottesville, but I remain a Republican and I'm a conservative. Um, well, I, I applaud the condemnation. Um, I would say it's a little late. I don't think Trump emerged out of nothing. I would ask where these people were uh, when Barack Obama was forced to hold up his birth certificate. I would ask where these people were when, you know, just hate mongers like Pam Geller uh, were, were spewing absolute nonsense about the, the mosque, at, you know, the 9-11 mosque. I would ask where these people were uh, during when uh, this whole idea of Sharia law was being made some sort of issue. Uh, this is built on a long history. Donald Trump didn't come out of nowhere. I mean, I, I could take it all the way back and say, you know, where were these people during the day of, of Willie Horton? Right. Um, because the Republican Party has been playing with fire. There's some sort of synergy in watching or some sort of synchronicity in watching how Steve Bannon is sort of playing you know, w w with these haters who are beyond the line and how the Republican Party has historically played with racism, trying to, you know, just saddle right up to the line. And also the way that he's sicked it against them. And, right. and in some ways, a data point I think is interesting. So you got Bannon, you got more. Then you got the race down in Virginia right. with Ed, Gillaps Ed Gillespie. Mm -hmm. Now, Ed Gillespie was on the opposite side. For Roy Moore was the insurgent candidate, right. and he ran against Luther Strange. You beat him. Ed Gillespie was the establishment guy, right. and he was running against the wing nut, who was right. Corey Stewart, who was Mr. Confederate Heritage. Right. And Ed Gillespie won, and I want to take a look. This is the kind of ad that Ed Gillespie is now running mm -hmm. as the establishment Republican candidate. Take a look. MS-13's motto is kill, rape, control. This violent gang has been tied to brutal murders across Virginia. Ralph Northam's policy? Northam cast the deciding vote in favor of sanctuary cities that let illegal immigrants who commit crimes back on the street, increasing the threat of MS-13. Ralph Northam, weak on MS-13, putting Virginia families at risk. Kill rape control, and then you got the president today saying Ralph Northam, who's running for governor, is fighting for fighting for the violent MS-13 killer gangs in sanctuary cities. Vote Ed Gillespie. Yeah, it looks really familiar. Um, and the need to uh, uh, place this kind of racism, this kind of bigotry, this kind of white supremacy solely on the shoulders of this insurgent alt-right ignores the fact that the table was prepared, you know, over, over the course of years uh, by, by the mainstream establishment Republican Party. What about the Democratic Party? Well, the Democratic Party has its history, too. It has a long history, which I've outlined in my work, yeah. you know, uh, uh, certainly going back to Roosevelt and, and so on. No, no one is immune to it. Y you know what I mean? It's just that we're at this moment of politics right now and have been, you know, at least since the, you know, uh, uh, the civil rights movement, where one party in particular has decided to run towards that and decide to extract its energy from that. That doesn't make... Uh, the Democratic Party uh, immune to any critique. How important? I know that you have you have a uh, you have a sort of view of the the power of this force, white supremacy in American politics. That that sort of. Um has a kind of continuity. How important is it for someone that runs a campaign like this to lose? Hmm. I'm only pausing on the question because. I uh, have, and I'm, I'm not, I'm just going to confess that I'm not sure about this. Right. Because I haven't decided, obviously I would like that person to lose. Right. But I'm not sure um, whether the problem is that the actual candidate that decides to siphon off the energy or the fact that the energy is there in the first place. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, Tana Hazi Coates. It's Thanks for having pleasure. me, Chris. Thanks for coming pleasure. through. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.